I want to introduce Brian real quick. And again, he's our mortgage partner in Dallas, Texas. Super high level. Uh, this guy is a maniac when it comes to, to mortgages. And, you know, Travis found him on Instagram. And, uh, and he just, he was like, man, we, we started out with a different mortgage broker at the time. Couple. Had a couple of uh, issues. You good? Had a couple of, you good, Kevin? I got to get my luggage. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. They're never there right at 11. All right. You, you'll be okay, fine. Right, cool, good. Um, so the, uh, you know, the thing is, is that we, we started out with this different mortgage broker, went through one or two transactions. You can usually tell real quickly, you know, if somebody's going to work out or not. It wasn't working out. And Travis was just like, hey, this guy, man, he looks good on Instagram. Handsome fellow. Man, he says all the right things. <laughs> I think this guy's, you know, kind of up to our speed. And he, you know, cold DM'd him and said, hey. You know, I want to get to know you, meet you, see if, you, you know, might be opportunity to grow. And Brian's at a point in his business where he doesn't, he doesn't need us. I think he likes us now, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, he was doing fine. And he's at a position where he only wants to work with people that are the right people. And that's how we've built our team. That's how we've built this company. We want to work with the right people. And so we got to know each other. And then, uh, I don't know, 200 plus transactions later. And uh, the thing is, is that He's a man of his word. Mm -hmm. He says if it's a deal, it's a deal. If he says it's not a deal, it's not a deal. He's even said, hey, I think these people are a little shady. And guess what? They were they shady. Were. They were shady. He was like, run away as fast as you can. Something doesn't smell right. That's who you want. But on top of that, you know, he contributes to our team monetarily. And <clears throat> I asked him one question once. I said, Brian, I said, what's the budget? Yeah. You know? I said, what's the budget? And he goes, it's unlimited. And I said, what? What do you mean unlimited? He goes, well, he goes, I trust you guys so much that if you're asking me for more money or to contribute, he goes, I believe you plan to increase production. And if we increase production, why wouldn't I want to spend more money? If you can spend a dollar and make back two, three, or four, shouldn't you spend as much as possible? You should never have a marketing budget. You should have a testing budget. Because once you test and it works, you should scale. That's why you get four emails a day from us. That's why you get three text messages a day. That cost us money, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yaman, yeah, how much do we spend on text messages each, each month? Huh. 15, 20 grand. 15 to 20 grand a month just on text messages. But we know the return on that. You know, we track everything. Yeah. Stephanie said, don't send her any more text messages. Yeah. 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 yeah, take Just all these, take me, all these people. <laughs> <laughs> take all these people off the list, all right? D and D M O. Let's do that. Um, but you know, we're here for you guys. We partner, we only partner with the best. They've got to be high speed, high level. They gotta go fast like us okay. as well. Um, well, we like to go fast slowly. Does that make sense? Um, aggressive patience. Right, so, so we're patient, but we're gonna attack at every single angle. angle. We're gonna bring on the right people. We spent half a million in the last three years. You know what, and not every single one of those coaches were, you know, it, it just didn't, sometimes it's what, it, it was what it was. But I can always pinpoint something that I was able to take away or something, you know. And I wanna invite Brian up. Brian, can you come up? Let's give Brian a break, warm welcome. My man, how are you? Good, 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 good. Mic on, everything all right? You see, good to go? Cool. Okay. I need some water. Uh, is, there, is there any water? Uh, yeah, up. I'm going to let, I'm gonna let Brian, uh, he's going to go for a little bit. And if he stops, then we'll come up and do a little fireside yeah. chat or Q&A, you know. And you should be asking, hopefully it gives you some knowledge, but you should be asking, hey, how do I get my lender, you know, or do you know a lender in my area that will do what you're willing to do? There you go. Good morning, guys. Um, first morning. and foremost, morning. the coffee kicking in. Everybody ready to do it? Yeah. All right, cool. Me too. Um, let me start with this. Chrissy was up here yesterday, 
And she mentioned to everybody that she talks fast. I'm just gonna tell you, she doesn't talk fast. I talk fast. Hey, you should check out my new community for free. It's where I host all of my more in-depth trainings. And you're going to get access to step-by-step -step courses showing you how to get buyer and seller leads for your business using passive prospecting, a supportive community of over 1,300 members, and weekly group coaching sessions you can attend and ask questions. Now, this community is all about passive prospecting and getting a quality buyer and seller leads through YouTube without spending a penny on ads or cold calling. Now the link is in the description below, so make sure you join for free today and say hi to me when you get in the community. I look forward to seeing you there. So uh, I'm gonna steal a line from Lil Wayne. I don't talk fast, you just listen slow, so listen up, okay? Um, my name is Brian McCauley, as he mentioned. I am a loan officer uh, in Dallas, Texas. Don't everybody boo me at the same time. Um, but I've been doing this for 20 years. It is the only job that I've ever had first job directly out of college. I graduated in December 2004, got a job as an LO 100% commission on February 7, 2005. So just started my 20th year and it's been an incredible run. Um, I say all that to say, during my 20 years, I have seen a ton. I've seen a ton, I've been through a ton, the subprime mortgage, I've messed with a bunch of realtors and home builders and past clients and all these things that we figure out like, gosh, who's the best resource? What's the best referral? What's the best stream? How can I convert the most? And so I'm gonna cover a bunch of topics today for you guys from a lending perspective. Um, Levi's gonna come back up here shortly and we're gonna kind of do like a little fireside chat, uh, interactive Q&A, because my thing is, you know, I could talk about a bunch of stuff, but I want you guys to ask questions. If I am hitting on everything that you guys need, that will be valuable to you, because I could go over everything under the sun, but it may not hit for your business right now. Um, so I'm gonna do a couple small things of my own, then I wanna come back up here with him, uh, ask some questions, and you guys fire away. So I'm gonna cover YouTube, lead conversion, uh, time management, what you should be doing with your lender. Like uh, most people say, this is my preferred lender. I hate that, they should be your mortgage partner. There is a huge difference, okay? Um, and I wanna discuss why. And so I'm gonna give you guys notes. Make sure your pencil is smoking whenever you're taking notes because I'm gonna be talking quick, but I wanna make sure that your lender is going beyond the loan. The mortgage realtor relationship is very parasitic. It's one-sided. The realtor gives the lender uh, a lead um, and they just hope that they follow up and convert and get it all done. It's like if lender answers the phone and they close on time, that's enough. And I'm like, it's not enough. You gotta do better, right? But the bar is so low in our industry that people have to do better. So I'm gonna mention that to you guys and then give you some valuable stuff to go back to your lender and go, hey, why are you not doing this with me and for me, okay? Um, so the first topic I'm gonna talk about is the YouTube topic because I think it's the most important one. It's impactful for you guys. And so I wanna talk about kind of the journey of how I met these guys. And so again, he touched on it, but uh, you know, Travis found me back in 2020. I've been doing social media in the, more, in the mortgage space probably um, since the end of 18, early 2019. And the reason I decided to do that is because mortgages are boring. They're super nerdy. They're super compliant. When you think about a home loan, it's like some old guy in a red tie at Wells Fargo in like the corner of like an old cherry desk. And they're just talking about compliance and guideline stuff and I'm like it's so nerdy there's got to be a better way to get this information to the public in a way that people will uh, appreciate it love it like it and obviously you know find it valuable so I started uh, the social media journey back then and got a little bit better of a presence online and so Travis found me and he reached out to me and was like hey you know this is who I am and this is what we're doing this is our group and uh, you know we've got this YouTube channel and we're producing these really good videos and they're generating leads and you know a couple of the lenders have messed up and you just really seem like you know what you're doing and so I'd like to meet you and chat and just see maybe if we can connect. In the back of my mind, I'm like, oh man, you know, who's this guy? And he's got a YouTube leads. Like, is this gonna be real? Is this another like, you know, random online deal? I'm like, eh, but Travis is really good on the phone. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I'll meet you if you come to the office and meet the team and kind of go through the process and figure out exactly what we do. Um, you know, I'm willing to do it. So they came in and they met us. Uh, it was just really a, a great relationship from the beginning. We've all become great friends, know each other's family. We go out to my lake house. We just talk and go over ideas and just kind of support each other every way, even outside of the YouTube and the business piece. But for me, I'm gonna tell you guys from a mortgage perspective, and I think this will help validate for you guys, but also give you a feeling. Um, you know, lenders, right, uh, not, not from a judgmental standpoint, but lenders care when they have a referral partner. They think, hey, if this is a realtor sending me a lead, how good is this lead? What's the conversion? By conversion, I mean I get a lead, lead to contact, contact to pre-approval, pre-approval to contract, contract to close. And believe it or not, the lender knows when they get a lead from A, B, or C agent, it's like the better the agent, the better the source, the better the lead. And lenders want to lean into the ones that are sticky and they're good and they edify and they refer really, really well and they convert really, really well. 
Um, so probably, I would say, mm, two weeks into our relationship, um, they started sending over leads. They got their Salesforce CRM set up. We got our setup. Everything was going. And so, of course, I take it and talking to the first one. And, hey, this is Bob from Chicago. And I'm like, cool. How do you know Travis? So the YouTube channel, I'm going, uh-oh, something's here. And this guy's like, hey, we're flying in. We want to buy a million and a half dollar house, 20% down, side and seed, need to get pre-approved. They said, you were the man. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is going, going to work. So we talk with them, get them pre-approved, get all taken care of. And within eight days, we had somebody pre-approved. They'd flown in town and got under contract. In the back of my mind, I'm going, uh-oh. My, my antennas are up of like, this is real. Hey, real quick, if you're thinking about changing brokerages or you're brand new and you're thinking about choosing a brokerage, well, Travis and I would love to talk to you about partnering with us at eXp. You'll get access to all of our coaching, training, and courses at no cost, but mainly we wanna see if we're a good fit for each other. So just check the description below and you can book a call with myself and Travis and we look forward to speaking with you. And you take that literally and you go from that moment until Monday or Sunday of the past week, and it's the same thing every time. And I will tell you, these guys are my number one account. Um, they are near and dear to my heart, but their leads through YouTube convert so well. One, um, the people on the other side feel like they know these guys before they even meet them in person, so they're excited. Um, the other piece is most people that are looking for this stuff are really, really ready. They're not kicking tires. So by the time they get to me, they know kind of price points, they know areas, they know specifics. Um, a lot of them that are reloads to Levi's point is, is, you know, they are coming in town and they have a short window to make a decision, so they're super serious. And as agents, you know, part of what I try to do for my referral partners is protect their time and their commission to make sure, hey, does their butt belong in your car? Because if you're going to use your weekends and nights to go out and make offers and get it all done, are they real? Are they serious? And right, so I act obviously not as a complimentary partner, but as a buffering system to make sure that these people are real, they understand the rules, they're not going to steal time. But the channel for them uh, has just exploded. And it has been such a high converting great breath of fresh air in our industry, but also in my business as well, because we have the opportunity to um, close a lot of transactions, kind of some scope for, for, for you guys. We close about 125 million a year, okay? Um, it's just myself, I have an amazing team. Uh, I'm all self-gen, we're probably 60% realtor, probably 20% past client, mm, maybe 10% CPA financial planner, and probably the other five or 10 social media. And I can tell you when it comes to being selective on who I work with and why, um, these guys and their accounts uh, it's very rare that I say this, but this is the golden goose that keeps on laying the egg all the time. And so we are super thankful to be a part of it. It's been an incredible journey to watch them start this, make this happen all the way to this point. Um, but I loved it so much that these guys encouraged me to do my own channel. And so um, we started my channel probably a year, year ago. Um, so for you guys out there, obviously for your lenders, tell them to go follow Dallas Mortgage Man on all sites. And I'm gonna tell you why I did the channel here in a minute, but a lot of loan officers, because the leadership is weak in my industry and they don't have a lot of help, they just say, I don't have the time to shoot, I don't know, I know what to do to get it all done. So these guys have been super helpful for me, but it's compounded my time um, beyond measure because a lot of things, you know, I have to repeat myself a lot or people aren't aware of how to break your lease, what's a two one buy down, how about your doctor program, what about an assumable loan, what's a sub two, all these things. And so I have great conversations, but what they've convinced me to do and showed me how it's increased my business and conversion is to create my own channel. So every time we have a topic, closing costs, whatever it is, I can put together that video, shoot it on YouTube, drop it out, get it all done, and it gives dramatic value to the outside world, but it also compounds the time. And so that way people get a lot more education, a lot faster, they feel connected to me, but also in a market like this that's a little shaky, we'll talk about later, and people aren't sure, like, oh, um, is it a good time to buy? Why well, wouldn't I wait till rates drop? How can I get a 2-1 buy down? These things help educate realtors, but homeowners to a lot of things, and potential home buyers, things they aren't aware of. And so it also helps overcome objections and educate, not only for the agent, but also for the potential buyer. And so a lot of times it helps increase uh, conversion ratios for you guys when you can get me in front of them, but also point them to the channel. We just had a guy, um, what was it, a month ago, reached out to Travis and was like, hey, I'm self-employed, 
I have too many deductions on my returns. I'm going to have to rent and pay $10,000 a month. And literally, I shot a bank statement video that says, hey, you can make a lot of money, but you don't show a lot of money. We have a bank statement loan. We can crush it and get it all done. He took my video, sent it to that guy. The guy called me literally two hours later, got on the phone, pre-approved the bank statement video, flew into town, contracted for 1.5, closed, super happy, get it all done. And so these are like, we have hundreds and hundreds of stories like this. Right, but if it wasn't for the YouTube channel, them creating the opportunity, getting to the outside world, they're getting to me, none of this stuff would happen. And so because of this stuff and because of the YouTube channel, um, they're creating so much opportunity in a different way. And the market's still very open to this in Dallas. And so I think, especially for agents, you guys have to consider, like, it's something you have to do and it has to be part of your business, just as cold calling, listing appointments, whatever it is, but you gotta build that into understanding, to Levi's point, it doesn't cost you time, it compounds your time. Um, I've fallen in love with it so much that I actually built a YouTube studio in my office that has two different sets. So when I have a great idea or a topic, I walk across the hall, flip on the camera and go, hey, what's up everybody? It's your mortgage expert, Brian McCauley. So you're looking to buy a house in Dallas, Texas and you're worried about these high interest rates? Stick around, I'm gonna tell you why interest rates are actually your best friend. It goes, ding, 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 get it all done. But it's been such a game changer for me and for us that I can't encourage everybody in here enough to dig into your channel more. Don't worry about how you look. They can edit it. It's about consistently doing it all the time, showing up, educating. It's just a matter of time before your channel continues to boom and grow just like theirs. And so a testament to them. Um, again, I see all kinds of different agents and different referral sources and different streams of um, leads. And I will just tell you the YouTube one, um, for me, it's just, it's the ace in the deck. It's the, the number one. I'm super thankful to you guys. And you guys should be super thankful to them because a lot, a lot of times it's really hard to figure all this stuff out. And effectively well, what you're doing is you're plugging into somebody and saying, hey, their past is literally creating your future. Right, so if I wanted to know how to become an incredible golfer, I wouldn't try to figure it all out. I would just say, hey, let me hire the best professional golf coach, meet him on the range, pay him tons. In a short amount of time, I can take a two year window of becoming a crappy golfer to a good golfer, shrinking it down to three months and being able to play. And it's the same thing here. And the competition on YouTube for agents is pretty skinny. It's even skinnier on the mortgage side. So seeing the opportunity and having evidence of success is, um, something that I think you guys should really lean into. But again, uh, their, their channel's been incredible. We're continuing to grow. We, we've got mine going and I just can't speak enough about it, which is it works like crazy. It'll work for you. It converts at a high level and it just makes you experience and everything so much better for everybody. Um, as far as topics I wanna cover, Levi, you wanna pop, pop, pop up here? We'll kind of do a, a little open uh, fireside chat. I want you guys to ask questions about like, what's going on in the market? Where are rates headed? Yeah. True. Uh, I got some great questions. So, yeah. I know y'all probably asked some questions. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so we want everybody to ask questions about like, what should I be asking my lender? What's the deal with rates? What's a buy down? Uh, what are things that we should be doing and talking to our lender? And so I enjoy when you guys ask quick questions. Please. Where's the mic runner? about your past client system, the alphabet system? Yeah, so one of the oh, things... Man, you're still in my question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just take my place. One of the things that lenders and agents are guilty of not doing is we work really, really hard on the front end to acquire the client. We close it, we get paid, but then we don't do a really good job of following up. Amen. And I think one of the biggest things about our industry is in the beginning of our career, it's all about client acquisition. As you get older and close a lot of deals, it really needs to be about client retention. Um, because we work hard to chase all these leads on the front end, and then you close all these people, and you've got this pot of gold on the back end, but people don't follow up. I mean, they've already closed a transaction with you, they like you and trust you. I always tell everybody my goal is always to get one client from every client. So as you start to require these clients and you close them and everything's good, it's don't forget about your past clients. There are a couple different methods that you can do always to make sure and stay connected to your clients, um, but the easiest one I tell everybody to do is there are 26 letters in the alphabet, and there are 52 weeks in the year. And so literally, if you just start with your A's in January and go all the way through and you just call your past client database in alphabetical order, you'll at least talk to your clients twice a year. It's the easiest thing, A's, B's, C's, C's, all the, all the, the way through. Checking in, how was the house, how was the move, how are you feeling about the na neighborhood, any big financial frustrations, how are things going good, what can I help with? Okay, by the way, have you crossed paths with anybody that could benefit from a conversation with me and Travis? Because our goal is always to get one client from every client. Who do you know that I can talk to that's buy, sell, or leasing? 
Now, as a lender, I can only help people on the buy side with home loans. So I have a little smaller box of who I can help for you guys. It's pretty much everybody. But there are so many people, especially on past clients, that you guys can call and check in with, but we don't have a system and we forget about them. So again, I think the alphabetical order uh, is the easiest way, way, way to do it. And you know, again, from them, from a system standpoint, it's like set up your CRM to where it just reminds you A's, B's, C's, and then what you just do is time block one hour a week. I do mine on thir Thursdays, so I live my life in theme days. Theme days are like workout days at the gym. Monday's leg day, Tuesday is chest day, Wednesday's arm day, Thursday's cardio day, whatever. You work out all the stuff. And so Monday I call realtors, Tuesday I call everybody under contract, Wednesday I call everybody that's pre-approved, how's the house, how's the home search going, what can I help with. Thursdays are my past client days. So I do the A's, the B's, the C's, all that kind of stuff. And then Fridays are cold calls and VIPs. So for agents, when you do all this and you boom and you have all the success, don't forget about your past clients. One, um, the cost of acquisition is zero. So if we pay for Zillow leads and stuff on the front end, it's expensive. And there's sometimes colder leads and you gotta work harder. If you'll just go to your pot of gold in the past and make sure that you check in with all your clients at least twice a year just using the A you know, through Z, um, you'll at least talk to them twice a year and you'll get so much conversion out of those people. Not only directly will they come back to you, but everybody knows somebody that buys, sells for at least one type of year. But if you don't check in with them at least twice a year, it gets funky. They'll forget about you, you'll miss out on the transaction, you'll see they close on somebody else on Instagram and you're like, I can't believe them. It's like, no, no, it's our fault. So coming up with these systems well on the back end to help protect and make more money off your past clients is a very, very good strategy. Um, and we probably close 250, 300 people um, each year. Imagine all those people probably move. 10% of your database moves every year. So if we just get 25 to 30 transactions each year, what's everybody's commission in here on average? Five grand, seven grand, right? So don't, even, don't just work hard on the people on the front end with the YouTube stuff here and there. As they're done and settled, make sure and follow up with them on the back end. One, so they will appreciate you and come back to you. But two, they'll refer you people. And it becomes easier to ask for referrals when you're connected with them at least twice a year. Yeah, Brian, I mean, I think that's a really, really good point. And actually, man, I mean, that, that's one of the things I'm like super grateful, man, not, not only for our friendship, but the, a lot of the things that you've taught me in business, man, in, in such a short period of time. And I think another thing that would be, you know, extremely helpful for, for one, the, the A through Z thing was like a game changer for me because like, you know, uh, our coach is Justin and, you know, I really like dropped the ball. And I know we talk about this on the call. Like I felt like I really dropped the ball on taking care of our past clients because we have been so busy always trying to acquire more and more business. And with 100, 150 transactions, 180 transactions a year, you know, it was just go, 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 go. And so what Brian does is just absolutely phenomenal. And I want, what I want you to, what I also want you to talk about, man, and, and share with them is like your gifting strategy. Mm -hmm. Because I get gifts from Brian all the time. Like I don't even know how he does this. Like I get them all the time. And I think it's so cool. Like when I got engaged, I got, I got, I got something from this guy. I didn't get anything from anyone else, but I got something from him for my birthday. I got something from him. Like he is paying attention on social media. I know he does this for his other clients. You know, we just get like random things at our house, just like thought gifts like here's a book you know or here's some wine or something like that I mean it's really impressive man how you're always staying in front of your clients always taking care of like the previous clients man and still doing everything that you do could could you share like a little bit more in depth about like your gifting strategy mm -hmm. man who are you using how much are you spending how are you doing it how are you knowing like what's going on with the hundreds and hundreds of people that you work with every year and staying in front of them yeah um, so I am also part of a professional coaching program called The Core. Um, the Core is a nationwide uh, coaching program for lenders and agents. Um, I came into The Core about six years ago. Uh, I was kind of a one-man army, meaning like, you know, it's very hard to build teams and build trust and people to take your leads and get it all going in our industry. Unfortunately, you know, it's really good at go, 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 and it's good sales and negotiations and all these things, but it doesn't teach us how to be business people very well. None of us have metrics. We don't know how many leads we need a month. What's our pull through ratio? Who are past clients? How do I send gifts and all that? And so all of this is a combination of everything I learned from being professionally coached. And sometimes people are like, man, you know, doing all this stuff sucks and it's hard. And I'm like, what sucks and it's hard is being in the same place in two years that you are now. Mm -hmm. That is the truth. Assuming you're gonna be in this business and you're gonna do well for the next 10, 10 years, start learning from the best, these small things ever ran over a small period of time. If you can implement, I mean, one small thing a month, 12 months from now, dude, that's 12 
new things, it will change your business dr dramatically. And so for him, from the gifting piece, so there, there are a couple easy things you guys can do as agents here and you guys can write down as tactics and takeaways, okay, that help with that piece. So the first thing is, on every single business partner that I acquire and every single client that I talk to, I have a form called an all about you form. You should make a form like that. It's called all about you, the fun part, okay? Because on y'all side and my side, whether it's buy, listing, or home loans, it's kind of a pain in the butt. There's kind of like a bunch of compliance stuff and it's a headache and it's not fun. So you get an all about you form on the clients and it just has like name of their kids, favorite restaurant, favorite sports team, favorite drink, whatever. I call it a cheat sheet. And if they're like, why do I need to do that? I'm like, because you're gonna be a client for life. I have to know what you like so I can take care of you and invite you to all my parties and send you gifts and get it all going. So the first thing to his point is every single client that we talk to or business partner, we get an all about you form on. One, so I know more about them. Two, is the transaction going on? I can have conversations with them. Oh, I went to Texas Tech. You did too. Oh, you got a dog, blah, blah, blah. It makes the transaction and the conversation stickier with some glue. Um, two, when they go to closing, instead of buying them a cutting board that says like, welcome home, whatever's on their cheat sheet, buy them something specific to it. It's like when you're dating somebody, if they like red wine and they like walks on the beach, guess where I'm going to take them? To the beach and get red wine, okay? So you don't have to think about it, but the cheat sheet comes down to more about them, not only so you can work it during the transaction, but you just attach it to the record in your CRM. So what happens is, to his point, uh, when I get reminded in January that, hey, you know, my A's are coming up and I've got to call them and check in with them, not only do I call and check in a about the house, but I'll call Mickey Mouse and say, Mickey, how's everything going with Minnie? Mickey, how's your golf game? Minnie, how's your tennis game? I have no idea what they did. I just looked at my cheat sheet prior to, okay? Second piece is you program from the all about you, wedding anniversaries, birthdays, and the CRM that reminds you, hey, this person's birthday and or anniversary is in a week. So what happens is it's a heads up. And then you take, obviously, that information, go to the all about you, figure out what it is that, that they like per the cheat sheet, and then put together a $10, $15, $20 dollar gift. And when you figure out this gifting program, big, small, everything in between, it starts to change the way that your clients feel about you because you're doing business a different way. It's not that you're not only calling them and connecting with them after the fact, it makes them feel like, hey, I get to know them better, information about their kids, sports teams, drinks, restaurants, birthdays, anniversaries. And so if we're trying to build relationships with pe people, um, they have to get to know us and they have to like us and they trust us, right? And so th think about like, uh, how much more impactful it is when people call you after the fact, when they check in, when they say, hey, how's, how, how's the move? Or if your d doctor calls and says, how are you feeling? Or when you buy a car, somebody says, wanted to call and say thank you again, how's everything going with the car? All these things. There's so many different touch points that y you can do, but sending people gifts once or twice a year, it doesn't have to be expensive. It just has to be specific to them because the dollar amount associated with the gift isn't the impact. The impact is, dude, my last lender or agent never called me, period. Yeah. This guy or girl calls me twice a year to make sure I'm all good, but he remembered that I play golf and I sent him a $9 sleeve of golf balls and says, Donald Duck, hope things are going well. Hit him straight this summer. Talk to you soon, Brian. Like these little things continue to matter. So no matter what, they're gonna come back to me, but also they're gonna cross paths with so many people. And then I also shoot random YouTube videos that don't go to the channel, but I post them as private. I'll send them to past clients and say like, Happy New Year, don't forget to file your homestead exemption form, just so you know, blah, 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 here and there. And so what this does as well, is it helps me compound my message when I can't get to every call, when I can't do the gifting, when I can't get it all done. Now, as you get bigger, and I've got great front end people that are like loan, uh, you guys probably think it was like uh, loan officer assistants, but they're really senior loan partners, processors on the back end, but at this level, I have an admin and a marketing manager. So my marketing man manager helps with social media, gifting, handwritten cards. And so what I did is took that coaching business practice that I learned, and as I was scaling and growing, it's not the highest and best use of my time, but we still got to get to the past clients. So I make the phone calls, which are the doctor calls, okay? She takes care of everything else, which is gifting, follow-ups, handwritten cards to everybody. So it's like I'm everywhere. She's endorsing people on LinkedIn. She's giving them reviews. I'm giving them phone calls. They're getting gifts. And they're like, God, this is amazing. You know, the last lender I work with couldn't even close a loan on time, much less getting all this other stuff done. And so when I talk about being a mortgage partner, these are things that I do to make my business whole and make it stronger. But I also give to them and say, hey, I've got to go beyond the loan. 
like our industry, again, is very parasitic. It's very one-sided. It's very realtor send lead to lender. Lender, please just follow up and try to get it all done. If they answer the phone, they close on time. I'm like, most people use the lender because of that. I'm like, the bar should be higher, right? And so from a business perspective, opening more doors, creating more opportunities, um, doing things like this for them and for partners, it's super important. And so I just run a system. Everything I do is a system, but it's a learned skill and a system over time. Uh, we're on year six, um, a lot of work to do, but you can also take these systems, many people, they've closed with their da database and their past clients and use the all about you's and the follow up and the g gifting to make sure that that stickiness and that glue stays there so you can retain all these people and they'll continuously come back to you, but also it's easier for them to refer you other people because you're top of mind all the time. Yeah, that's really, really good stuff, man. And so, so I kind of want to switch gears a little bit and get a little bit more tactical, right? How, so for, for everyone out here who's looking for a lender partner, right? How do we get away with it, right? Like, like you contribute financially, right? Obviously coaching and all that stuff as well, but you contribute financially, right? So for, for one, how does someone go out and know that they're talking to the right person who can, who sees the vision, right? Mm -hmm. Who's willing to throw in the type of, you know, money that you're willing to throw in and then, and then how, right? You know, like you're on our website, you're on our YouTube channel, like all those little intricacies so that like everything that we do is legal and it's up to standard yeah. and we can do all that stuff. How does someone go in about finding a you, man? So a few things, the, the short, quick answer is make sure everything is RESPA compliant, one, uh, which we are. But two, yes. I think as a realtor, you have to step back and say, hey, um, right now, what are the top three things that are most important to you when selecting a, a mortgage partner and why? That can be education, that can be rates, that can be giving referrals back to you, that can be helping out monetarily, that can be YouTube channels. Get all of your top three and put them there. And if none of those top three are referrals back growth stuff here and there, that should be your fourth. Because again, most of the time it's like, uh, they just need to be good on their follow-up, educate my clients, close smooth and on time. It's all about the loan. You need to make sure that whoever the lender is that you're taking care of and you're exchanging the business with goes beyond the loan. It has to go beyond on the loan. So my original goal when I was young was like, I wanna become the best loan officer ever, meaning I wanna know every guideline, get every deal done, make every deal done that other people can't do, close to moving on time with a great, great experience. As I grew and expanded, I was like, I just don't wanna be the best loan officer, I wanna be the best mortgage partner. And these are two separate things, but they need to come into one, okay? So to, to this point, from a selection standpoint, I'm sure you guys probably already have pretty good lenders in, in here, but they should, be, they should think about business growth. They should be talking to you, not just about loans, but what can I do to help make you more money? Yeah. How can I help you scale and grow? Uh, where do you want to grow your business the most? I teach a ton of classes, but I teach a class for agents called 50 Ways to Generate Leads Without Breaking the Bank. How to get a CPA, how to get a divorce attorney, how to get a wedding planner, how to get more out of past clients, all these things to think, hey, if I can help my realtor partners get an additional 10 to 15 deals a year, whether that's organic referrals that I get from our people or I help them grow their business to where they can get it, that to me is much more valuable than a quarter of an interest rate. But because most lenders don't do that and they're commoditized, they don't think beyond the loan, that's about all they can offer. From a monetary standpoint to this point, it's just trading dimes for dollars. But you have to get a lender that wants to invest in the business and sees growth, not buying your business. Meaning any lender can help you split Zillow leads, any lender can do all this stuff. But if the primary reason mm, that you use that lender is because they're paying for stuff, it's not the right model. Meaning uh, they're always gonna run into somebody that has more money. So if your person, Stacy or Bob, says, well, I like them because they're using you know, Zillow with me and they're paying 3,000 a month, I'm like, cool, is that it? Okay, great, so I'm gonna pay five, five a month. Call them and fire them right now. It's a, it's a mafia mentality, which is who's gonna pay the most. I wanna be as who's the most valuable. Yeah. Yes, monetary commitment is part of it. It needs to be part of it, but they should be going beyond that and the loan to say like, how can we get you where you wanna go? I can help you get a builder, I can help with past clients, and over a long period of time, that stuff compounds. And so start getting under the hood with your existing LOs, stretch them to be like, hey, I wanna figure out how to get a CPA, a divorce attorney, a wedding planner. How do I go talk to high-end auto sales people that sell Ferraris? Because at the end of the day, everybody that buys a Ferrari probably has a ton of homes and portfolio, and I wanna get them to get it all involved. So make sure, one, they have experience in the business. Our business and mine, it's, you guys know there's a lot of regulation. 
Yeah, things fall out all the time. Make sure they can do the most important thing in the beginning alone, which is know what you're doing. So when I send you clients, you follow up, you edify me, you do the homework up front. There's no, no big surprises, uh, and we close smooth and on time. But the second piece is take away the, the monetary piece. Hey, don't pay for my b b business. Help me grow it and open more doors and expand, but how? So you got to get their business mind into it. And so you guys need to um, either work harder or better with your existing people to grow and become creative or talk to your agent friends and, and just say, hey, like, who's the best in town? Who should I be using and why? Because again, it's not all about the loans. It's important, but if they're not looking out for your best interest at heart and trying to grow your business in all these areas, um, they might not be the best partner for you. So that's something to really consider when you are trying to figure out who's your person for the future and why. Yeah, that's really good, man. And I think, I think that's like, why I love our relationships so much, man, is because it's not just about the loan. Yeah. It's about the relationship after the fact. So if you're out there looking for like a really good mortgage partner, you know, he sends gifts on our behalf as well. You know what I mean? And like, like you were mentioning earlier on, on our client area, I mean, that, that was a really, really tough deal, you know? And, and so it's like, you want to get with someone who has a lot of experience and someone who really cares, you know, because I mean, that was, that, that was a tough deal to get done, you know, to get all the way across the, uh, all the way across the finish line. And so, you know, having that extra that like a, a lender that's on on YouTube who's always educating clients you know what I'm saying and he was like hey you know you need to you need to send him this video on this bank statement loan and I sent him the video because like what was cool is that he was like he wasn't like blowing me off because like me and this guy actually have a really great relationship I mean, we went to motocross together I know all of his kids I mean we have we have a great relationship but I, I could tell that he wasn't going to be able to make a move for several more months, like probably six months, eight months down the road. And, you know, we were talking and I was like, man, like, how can we, how can we get this guy done? And he's like, dude, you just got to send him this video. I literally, I sent this guy the video. He watched the video on the bank statement loans. And then he hits me up. He's like, dude, let's, let, let's freaking roll. You know what I'm saying? So because, you know, he, we have such a great relationship, man, he's always, you know, putting out the content, always educating people. Like he's, he, he is just like the go-to person for us because he really cares about the clients and he helps us, you know, with conversions as well. I mean, that could have been six months down the road or eight months down the road. Who knows? Maybe it didn't happen. You know what I mean? So like the fact that, you know, I sent that video, he reached out to me, I got him connected over with him and in him and his, and Brian and his team, like took that client and really, really worked with him and his family, his entire situation. And he got what may never have been a deal. He got the deal done you know what I mean so you you have to go beyond like you said the financial benefits of, of working with someone it, it can't just always be about the money you know what I mean it needs to be about most importantly which is taking care of these clients getting them across the finish line educating them on things that they have no clue about right and like that's what we're always trying to do is educate our buyers and educate our sellers and you know that's one of the things that you know uh, I, I can open it up. Does does anyone have any questions? You know um, about uh, rate buy downs or anything creative finance or anything like that. Does anyone have any questions for Brian right now? Before you know, because I got plenty. Go ahead, brother. Do we have a mic? Yep. Mic runner. Hang tight. Mic. Stand by. Standing by. While we're waiting, remember you guys follow my channel, Dallas Mortgage Man. Give it to your lender and be like, hey, we got to get going Let's on this as up. well, so we can you know compliment each other. Might seem like a silly question, but uh, with the rising interest rates today, I find that the customers or clients, customers that I speak with, they start and end their discussion with rates. Yeah. And in, what is the best way, in your opinion, to describe the difference between interest rate and APR? It's, it's okay, so it's a good question. So, so part of what we do is I also run a separate class called Scripting for Success, which is like overcoming objections and making people think and understand, is it a real objection? Can I help overcome in all the details? So uh, the direct question to this piece is, what's the difference of an interest rate and an APR? So the interest rate is the rate that you qualify for that you're paying on a loan. The APR includes any buyer costs that are not being paid for by the seller. So when you marry the two to get, get together, that equals the APR. So if it's a 7% rate and there's $5,000 in cost, the buyer has to pay, that's why the APR is 7.45, because the APR is the total together that is being financed and the cost to the buyer. So the interest rate is what they're qualified for paying on the loan. The APR is the rate plus any closing costs the seller aren't paying. Married together equals the 
APR because they want us to disclose what the overall costs are. So the annual percentage rate for the two, the rate and the cost, is the difference of the APR and the actual rate. But people should just care about rate, not APR, because when you're quoting APR, especially in the beginning, we don't know how much the seller's going to give. So what if they pay for all the cost and the APR and the interest rate should be together, the exact same, but the APR piece, they don't pay that rate. That's just the total of the interest rate plus the closing costs. But once the costs are done, that part is out. But the government makes you say, this is the real cost of the borrower, which is the rate and the closing costs. But what they're paying for on the home loan is what they're locked in on. So a uh, follow-up question with that. Uh, and I understand, and I get it. But thank you. But let's just say um, I want my client to work with you. Mm -hmm. And let's just pretend Travis is a another lender, and Travis is quoting a 6.75% rate with a 7.405 APR. Sure. You're quoting a 7.1 rate with a 7.3 APR. Mm -hmm. Which one's the better deal? So the, the answer to that for agents is, is you always want to get with the lender and do what's called a total cost analysis. It is not about rate. It's about the total cost of the loan. Interest rates have two, like a, a coin, a head and a tail. The head is what is the rate, the tail is what is the cost. But consumers only look at one thing, the rate, right? They don't look at the cost. So what you have to do is do a total cost analysis and say, hey, this person's rate is 675, this is person 7125, here's the difference of the APR and the payment, but what's the total cost? Meaning, if the total cost on the cheaper rate is $3,000 higher, then the person that's getting the seven and a quarter, but the payment is $100 more expensive, well, they're actually paying $3,000 to save 100, so to divide those into each other. It's a 30 month break even point. So hey, you gotta make mortgage payments for 30 months in order to get that money back. Now the deal is, any lender can do that. Any lender can charge extra points and fees to get the rates down. The question is, is it a good use of the money for the client? Do you wanna trade $3,000 to save 100? I don't. So the question is, when I see that, I always say, hey, I'm just curious, their rate is lower than mine, but they've got discount points and fees over here and the APR is higher. Did you ask them to put those fees in there or did they just present it to you and stick it to you with that? And they'll say, I never asked that. The reason they do that is because they know the consumers have big cartoon eyeballs yep. about rate and rate only. So I, what happens is, well, if you want to do that, great. We can talk about, 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 about it as well, but I want to give you options and say, hey, here are the three options, regular rate, premium rate, which is where you get money back, or discounted rate, which is cheaper rate in payment, but it costs you X amount of dollars. It's your money, let's talk about how to use it and what the break even point is, and I present them the options. So the better component is, look at the total cost analysis of both. Figure out why, and then once you figure out the why, then let the lender have the conversation as an advisor on, this is what I would do and why. But when you see Rocket Mortgage or depository institutions, yep. and they have a rate that's like a quarter, three eighths low, lower, but the APR is higher, look in the fine print. This comes with a one discount point, blah, 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 whatever. It's not the real rate, they're just marketing junkies and they pitch it that way, so the consumer will lean over here and be like, this person's at seven and a quarter, this person's 6.875. Apples to apples, of course, but it's never apples to apples. It's apples to oranges. People just don't read below and the fine print. So you have to look at the total cost analysis to figure out what the truth is. But also, if people want to pay money to get a, a lower interest rate, is it a good use of the money? Most of the time, it's no. Now, if we can get the seller to pay for it, always. Thank you. Yep. And, and real quick on that, I mean, are you, are you asking just for your own knowledge? Yes. Okay, okay, cool. Because like, I don't, whenever I talk to my clients, I never get into rates. Ever, I don't talk about interest rates. I don't talk about the financing. I literally make the make it very very clear. I'm here to help you buy a house. So right. I, I figured you were probably asking for yourself. So that's that's some. Really and a good great counter is always like, hey, if they get two or three opinions, okay, I respect that. Assuming yeah. the terms are competitive, give me two or three of the things that are most important. You and selecting lender to get you the finish line. Yeah. This is your quarterback. Don't make it about price. It's commoditized. It's not a garage sale. It's a value. This yeah. is the biggest investment and purchase of your life. Do you want the B quarterback that sits on the bench or do you want Mahomes? Now, if there's a 2% difference in the rate, I understand. But when you're talking about a quarter, margins, just like agents, but it's normally about the total cost and analysis as to what it is and what's the factors in there. Is there PMI? Can they bump their credit score? All of these things. So it's just set the table for the total cost, hand it to me, just like if somebody said, hey man, can you pull comps and what should I offer? I'd go, dude, Trap is the, 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 the man for that. Defer, yeah. so that way, we can speak on it. Yep, absolutely. We got another question right back here. So can you um, beat a builder's loan 
or builder's lender and how? Excellent question. Yeah. So I used to be a builder's lender for years for 2012 to 2016. On the channel, I have a video that, that says the pros and cons of a new construction lender. And it explains these incentives are one for three places. They are built into the price of the house. That, that's okay. Um, they charge a higher interest rate. Um, and then, then just take all the extra money and give it back to the consumer, or they give the consumer a great rate, but then they charge them a lot of fees and they get it all washed out. You have to discover which one of the three it is. If it's in the price of the house, it's a good, good, good deal, take it, take it. Most of the time it's higher rates or competitive rate with a bunch of fees, and so they're giving you $7,000 in bonus bucks, but they're charging you $5,000 in extra fees, so the delta is only two grand. You've got to get into the x-ray. Let me look at it and see. But that's why I created that on the channel so people can look and be like, oh, it's either here, here, and here. Now when you know where it comes from, you know what to look for. Then you know what to look for. You're like, is it really the best deal? And by best, I don't mean cheapest, <clears throat> meaning best of like, is it the best setup for the client? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a really great question because, I mean, we, we work with a lot of new construction and, and obviously a lot of pre-existing as well, so there's really no problem there. And and sometimes we, we do... And I tell them, take it. You yeah, refer to me exactly. based on trust. I can't win them all. Let me look at it. And if it's the actual best deal and all the incentives, take it. I would too. Yeah. But here's what I'll do is I'll call you in nine months and I'll refi you out because that builder's lender ain't going to ever call you again. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is like we, you know, sometimes they, they, they don't go with Brian and that's okay. Like we understand that that's definitely, that's definitely going to happen. But, you know, there, I, I mean, on several occasions, we have new construction people who want just better customer service. They want the better package. It's like I talked about yesterday. It's like if you're going into a million dollar lawsuit, right, are you going to hire a brand new attorney that's fresh out of, you know, school, right? Or are you going to hire someone who's been in the game for 15, 20 years, you know, who charges 500 bucks an hour versus 100 bucks, but you got a million dollars on the line i'm going to the best of the best of the best i mean he did my loan he did you know he did levi's loan you know and but so remember builders lenders and i mean this respectfully every mortgage lender is one of two things transaction based or relationship based right the transaction based person is not focused on the person yeah. and the relationship behind the lead the relationship based lender is always focused on the relationship so these lenders that are the builders lender for most part um builders only want that lender for control they have too many fallout all the time to get it all done. So most of the time, their compensation plans and stuff are really, really compressed. So it's like saying, hey, you get 3, 3% on a deal. They're going to kick back 2% here and there. That's their model. If that's their model. It's okay. It's what's best for the client. You just have to figure out what your business model is and isn't. But you're rarely ever going to get a high-level professional agent, lender, whatever, at a commoditized discount piece. Because if that lender was really, really good, they probably wouldn't work for the builder. The builder knows that. And they're throwing them all the business. Mm -hmm. So even though they're getting paid 30 cents on the dollar, they don't have their own business to do. So that way they stick to that model, which is fine for some. I'm not knocking it, but that's the reason behind it. And so they're not going to call as much. They're not going to follow up as much because they're just waiting for the next person to pull up through the subdivision. Because if that deal falls apart, they don't care. They don't have a relationship with him or the client. Why do they care? If it goes up in flames, the relationship-based concept gives loan officers a much more sticky incentive to make sure it's close and smooth and on time and it's done right. Because we're only as good as that actual deal. Because if you and I are partners, I can't screw it up. Where they're like, they don't n n know you. They dangle a carrot front of the client they take that but if it goes to hell in a handbasket what what do they care cool and we got time for one more question and then uh, we're gonna get ryan panita up on stage cool. so we got one more question right here hi um my question was answered travis but what i was going to come and ask you brian was yes. is it in my best interest as an agent to stay in my lane which that's what i've always thought and that's my reply to my clients is you go into that lane with the lender because they can answer those questions best guidelines change every day mm -hmm. so thank you travis i'll stay on that point but thank you, Brian, because now I have one more thing to say to them, but make sure you ask your lender to give you the total cost analysis. Yeah. Yeah. That makes me sound more professional and, both of us, and looking out for them. Both of us have talking points. Like, I don't want them to ask me about comps and go, just like a Travis, you know, uh, what about a 2-1, just talk to Brian. You can have little talking points. Hey, mm -hmm. these are great opportunities right now. Those programs are very hot, successful, blah, blah, blah. Here's what I want to do is connect with Brian. So when you have that mortgage planning session, you yeah. can talk about that anything else. Same thing, what about comps and blah, blah, blah. Hey, that's a strategy that Travis. So you have a little bit of a bullet point talking point, very small, so we don't get in each other's lane, but it yeah. transitions right. the conversation well, where you don't misspeak, I misspeak, but it doesn't seem weird, like, no. 
Yeah. Right? Excellent. Yeah, and that's that's what's been like really cool about our relationship too, you know, and I'll end right here is like, you know, we've been working together for years now and like we have scripts together. You know what I mean? Like I know what Brian's gonna say and Brian knows what I'm gonna say and what the team is gonna say. So we're we're, we're a very cohesive unit and our and we wanna just provide the best customer service for our buyers and sellers and we wanna make sure that everyone is taken care of not only during the transaction but on the end run. But Brian, thank you so much, man, for everything you do, bro. I really appreciate you. Appreciate y'all. Give him a big round of applause there.